Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. All right, day two of the Tool uh, Advent Calendar. Unfortunately, neither Matthias nor Martin could join me here today, so it's just it's just me, Stefan, uh, co-hosting alone. I, I ask you to bear with me, as uh, as we all know, my knowledge is not nearly as vast or great, and my insights are not nearly as interesting as, as Martin and Matthias. So uh, we'll muddle through these first few days without uh, without anyone but but myself. Uh, we'll keep these pretty short to the point. Um, look for uh, both the homemade advent calendar that uh, Matthias, Martin, and I put together, but then also we'll have the Tuol calendar um, in the evenings as opposed to in the morning. So that way you can uh, have twice the listening fun with a mere 48 episodes coming out this month. Actually, make that 49 episodes coming out this month. So um, if you want for beer content, then um, look no further than What's on Tap podcast because we are going to have a lot of content coming out. Uh, so day two brings us a um, a Berliner Weiss flavored with cherries, red currants, and prunes called One Ton of Christmas. Now, this is uh, in series with the other one ton of uh, beers that um, Tool Hall has been putting out over the, the course of the past couple of years. Um, they've largely been hit or miss. I think I've enjoyed more of them than not. Um, I, uh, I think they're usually a lot of fun to try. And, and I can, that's kind of what I love about Tool as a brewery is... Um, you may not always like what they put out, but at least you know they're going to give you something you've probably never tried before. Uh, and I can't say that I've tried something with red currants and prunes and cherries. Uh, the label says, when you cannot get enough of Christmas, you take a ton of the best classic Danish Christmas ingredients and brew a Berliner Weiss. Uh, Merry Christmas. Ooh, this comes in 8.1% as well. Uh, wow, I did not expect this to be a, a high ABV beer like that. The color is... Well, it's kind of, I guess, plum colored. It's a bit of a reddish um, tinge, a little bit in the murkiness kind of level, but uh, it looks kind of, I guess, what you would expect something made with cherries and plums and uh, red currants to to look like. Maybe you'd want a bit deeper red color, but uh, it it looks okay. The smell is, hmm. It smells fruity. Um, I don't know, like, I really get any particular note. Maybe the red currants kind of come through a little more than the cherries or the prunes do. And to be honest, I don't really know what a prunes, and I've had prunes before, but if you were to tell me what they smell like, I would say sweet because they smell kind of sugary, but a plum, in, I'm sorry, a prune in and of itself, I'm not sure what that would actually smell like. Usually they're soaked in rum or, or something, which makes them a lot more enjoyable. Uh, cheers. Mm. You get a lot of cherry and red currant on the nose, uh, on, on the tongue. Um, especially red currant. It's it's kind of um, astringent, but um, tart, I guess. Um, it's got a. It's really Christmassy, I guess. Uh, very puckering. Uh, in the um, in the aftertaste, it, I don't get um, like I would expect to get kind of the maybe the the I guess they didn't use the pits on the cherries and maybe more of just the fresh fruit because you usually get kind of like a cinnamony spiciness whenever you get the cherries with the pits and the and the skins but I, I don't think they did that with this I think they just used just the raw fruit itself. The um, the red currant I think really comes through, uh, and again I'm not really sure what the plum oh, sorry the prunes are supposed to do here, other than maybe give a little bit of sweetness and calm down the red currants, because it's got like I said uh, just a really tart um, uh, tartness to it, but it really hides the 8.1 percent uh, ABV. Unlike the Secret Santa from from yesterday, which um, you really got the ABV on that one. I mean, it was pretty 
it was pretty up there. Uh, this one, I mean, if you if I didn't know it was 8%, I would swear it was 4 And I would probably down this pretty fast, not realizing that I'm about to get hammered. Um, which is sometimes fun and also sometimes dangerous. But hey, it's Christmas time, so you should in, indulge a little uh, going around. Mm. That's for what I feel is kind of missing is kind of more of the cherry. I wish it had a little more cherry. And I wish I knew what the prunes were bringing to the party. I said, I feel like it would be a bit of sweetness or um, maybe that's what it's, maybe there is some sweetness there that I'm just not uh, picking up on because of the the, the tartness of the, the red currants um, that are in here. Uh, does it remind me of a Danish classic? Excuse me, a, Danish, a classic Danish Christmas? Maybe not. But it does taste like a beer cocktail. Um, if someone was to, to put this in a cocktail glass and tell me it was a, a cocktail of some sort, I would probably believe them because it does have a very nice, kind of fun cocktail nature to it. Um, so it's a good party beer. Uh, so my rating for this one is going to be a 375. I, I quite enjoy this. I think it's a lot of fun. And like I said, it reminds me of a, a cocktail in a glass, like a... I think there's a cocktail called a poinsettia involving uh, cranberry juice and, and vodka, I'm sure. Um, it kind of reminds me of something like a, a cranberry vodka drink, I guess. All right, so that was day two. Uh, one ton of Christmas. This podcast is part of the Pod Syndicate family. For more criminally compelling shows, articles, and conversations, head to wearepodsyndicate.com.